In this lesson, we're going to be going over 11.4, comparing data using line graphs. We're going to start by comparing two sets of data using tables, graphs, and equations. For our first example, two water bottles, A and B, are being filled at two different taps. Bottle A is filling at a rate of 50 milliliters of water every second. Bottle B is filling at a rate of 25 milliliters of water every second. The tables here show the total amount of water in the two water bottles during the first five seconds. So we can see our table for bottle A and our table for bottle B. Now our table for bottle A shows that after one second it's collected 50 milliliters of water, after two seconds it's collected 100 milliliters, and after three seconds it had collected 150 milliliters. So the equation that would represent this table would be equal to y equals 50x because for each second that we add, we multiply that by 50. We can take the information in the table and plot that to create a straight line graph. So the time would be our x value and the total volume of water would be our y value. And remember, y is equal to 50x. For bottle B, after one second, it had collected 25 milliliters. After two seconds, the bottle had collected 50 milliliters. And after three seconds, the bottle had collected 75 milliliters. So the equation that would represent this data would be equal to y equals 25x because for every second that we add we multiply that by 25. So our data in our table the time would be equal to our x value and our y value would be the total volume of water collected or y equals 25x and we can change the data in the tables into ordered pairs, which we can graph into straight line graphs. So in the graph below, we can see that we have two separate lines graphed. We can then take a look and compare the two lines to help us answer some questions. We're now going to use our graph to answer some questions. The first question that we're going to answer is how much water is in each bottle after four seconds? So we're going to take a look at our x-axis and find four seconds and see where four seconds lines up with each graph. So for water, bo water bottle A, four seconds lines up with 200 milliliters. We take a look at water bottle B, four seconds lines up with 100 milliliters. Our next question is which bottle contains more water at 5 seconds and we need to figure out how much more. So first we have to figure out how much water is in each bottle after 5 seconds. So if we take a look at water bottle A, it would have 250 milliliters. And if we take a look at water bottle B, it would have 125 milliliters. So water bottle A would have more water after five seconds. To figure out how much more, we would just have to take our values and subtract them. So we would do 250 minus 125, which is equal to 125 milliliters. If we were to ask ourselves if at any time did the bottles contain the same amount of water, 
we will want to take a look and see if there are any spots in our graph where the two graphs overlap each other. The only spot where the two graphs overlap each other would be at zero milliliters and zero seconds. If we were to analyze how the amount of water in bottle A relates to the amount of water in bottle B, at each time the amount of water in bottle A would be twice as much as the amount of water in bottle B, which we can gather from both our graph and from our tables. Next we're going to compare two number patterns by graphing them. So we have two patterns, pattern A and pattern B. Pattern A is 3, 6, 9, and 12, and pattern B is 4, 8, 12, and 16. Now we can create data tables for each of our patterns by assigning a position number for each term in the pattern. Remember a term is a number that's in a pattern. So the first term in pattern A is equal to 3. So we would put a 1 for the position number and a 3 for the term. The second term in pattern A is equal to 6. The third term is equal to 9 and the fourth term is equal to 12. We can figure out that we are adding 3 to each term to get the next one, which is also the same thing as multiplying each term by 3. So we would take 1 and multiply it by 3 to get 3. We would take 2 and multiply it by 3 to get 6. We would multiply 3 by 3 to get 9, and so on. We can keep extending our pattern now that we know what the pattern is. And just like in the previous examples, we can take our table and graph each point from the table. So the position number would be equal to our x coordinate and our term would be equal to our y value. We can do the same thing with pattern B. So in pattern B our first term is equal to 4, our second term is equal to 8, our third term is equal to 12, and our fourth term is equal to 16. You can think of this pattern as either adding 4 or taking the position number of the term and multiplying that by 4. And just like with pattern A, our position number is equal to our x coordinate and our term is equal to our y coordinate. So the graph on the right shows two straight line graphs that represent our two patterns. To figure out how many times bigger each term in pattern B is compared to the term in pattern A, we can take a look at the values for each position number. For the first position number, the value of the term in pattern A is 3, and the value of the term in pattern B is 4. Likewise, for the second position, we can see for pattern A that the value is equal to 6, and for pattern B, the value is equal to 8. We can turn this into a fraction, which would tell us that each term of pattern A is 3 fourths the times the value of each term in the same position of pattern B. Now we're going to go through the process from start to finish. Sarah can drink 15 milliliters of milk every second while Megan can drink 10 milliliters of milk every second. Complete the two tables below to show the total amount of milk they can both drink in five seconds. So we know that Sarah can drink 15 milliliters of milk every second and the top table is for Sarah, so after one second she's had 15 milliliters and that pattern is going to continue so after two seconds she has drank 
30 milliliters. After 3 seconds, 45 milliliters. After 4 seconds, 60 milliliters. And after 5 seconds, 75 milliliters. We're going to do the same thing for Megan. So after 1 second, she drank 10 milliliters. So after 2 seconds, she drank 20 milliliters. After 3 seconds, 30 milliliters. 4 seconds, 40 milliliters. And 5 seconds, 50 milliliters. So we can go ahead and graph both of our data tables. Our time would be equal to our x coordinate and our total volume would be equal to our y coordinate for both of our data tables. Now because we have larger numbers, we want to scale our graph. I want to label both of my axes as time and total volume drink. I also want to make sure I include my units as well. So time was in seconds and volume was in milliliters. It's also important to include a title for your graph. So we'll make our title amount of milk, milk drink. And if we take a look at our x-axis, we only go from 0 to 5. So we can label that. It would start with the zero all the way to the left. We can go every two spots. And then if we take a look at our y-axis, we have to go all the way up to 75. And so we should have each line be equal to 5 milliliters. Now for Sarah, I'll do hers in blue, and then I'll do Megan's in red. So first we have 0, 0. So I'll plot a point there. Then we have 1, 15. So find 1, and then 230, so I find 2 on my x-axis, 345, four sixty, and 575. Now that I have my points, I would take a ruler and connect them. And I'm just going to label that so we know blue is Sarah. And then now let's do the same thing for Megan. So we have 0, 0, 1, 10, 2, 20, 330, 440, and 550. And then we would connect them again. Now that we have both of our graphs, we can answer some questions. The first question is, how much milk does each person drink in three seconds? So we would go to find three seconds and then see where that lines up with our graph. So for Megan, that would be equal to 30 milliliters. And for Sarah,
that would be equal to 45 milliliters. The next question is how long does each person take to drink 60 milliliters of milk? So this time we're going to find 60 milliliters on our y-axis and then we're going to figure out where that lines up with each of our graphs. So for Sarah, 60 milliliters of milk would be drink after four seconds. And then for Megan, we can see that our table didn't go that far. However, when you graph an equation, the line could keep going on and on and on. If we were to extend our line, we can see that 60 milliliters would be equal to 6 seconds. Our last question is how much milk does each person drink after 7 seconds? So we're going to have to extend both of our lines. Now because I don't have any space left on my graph, I'm going to use the equation to help me figure out what my y coordinate would be equal to. So we take a look at Sarah. We know that after every second she drinks 15 milliliters. So our equation would be equal to y equals 15x. So we would plug in 7 for x and we would figure out what 15 times 7 is equal to. So Sarah would drink 105 milliliters after 7 seconds. And then Megan, every second she drinks 10 milliliters. So the equation would be y equals 10x. And then when we would plug in 7 for x, it would equal 70 milliliters.